Committee of the whole. I'd like a motion of approval of the agenda that's before you, please. Fred Bain, second. Um, Ron McLaughlin, all in favour? All opposed? The motion carried. Ruth, welcome. Hi. You're up. <laughs> Thank you. I uh, just thought I'd stop in um, to in preparation for tomorrow. Don't you want to sit down? Uh, tomorrow's uh, drop-in session and Saturday mornings, just to see if you had any questions about the um, the Green Can program. So really, we're all helping each other move the villagers along. Uh, by setting examples and also helping to spread the word because it, we all know how much communication it all takes and there's a lot of it going on but um, I thought I'd just take this opportunity because tomorrow's the night. I'm preparing to bring different cans. We've got the green can, the bear animal resistant one that we're really trying to encourage people to get. I took pictures of what district would happen to be at the district of North End's offices. So they got a nice little display going on there with what goes in, what stays out. And so I'll work on some of that. Mandy's going to be there. I've yet to get further confirmation from Smith, right? But they said they would send someone. And the very smart uh, representative, representatives will be there as well. On Saturday, no Smith, right? Um, Susan will be there. And it will still have bear smart representation, but I always appreciate any extra help. <laughs> well, I'm certainly be attending. Great. My dear wife will be attending on my behalf. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I'm not the expert, but Smith Wright, I hope to learn from as well. But I guess I just am motivated to help uh, achieve. 100% participation by the end of this month because, in my view, the sooner we reduce our tipping fees uh, weight, or rather more of the tonnage, the better you're in a position to negotiate the contract. Mm -hmm. Although, just get, if I can interject so that we know, uh, they now give us a flat rate. So uh, they're a little mm -hmm. secretive on what the tonnages are anymore. Um, so we don't know if we're getting a good, good deal or not, but uh, presumably we're in a good position to negotiate anyway. Yeah. Uh, there isn't a, a committee as such, but there may be willing people in the village if we wanted to follow the drug, or, you know, or try to find out more information to support your negotiating situation. There was a time when Smith Wright said they were not including the tonnage for Motion Point, but in fact they were, and we ended up, the village got a credit. As when a they were waiting. of actually witnessing that and then challenging them on it. So it's not that we don't trust them, but it's it's uh, always good when we know. Hmm. Oh. No, um, you just mentioned participation earlier. So this is mandatory, right? They cannot not participate. Well, it is uh, <coughs> it, Metro Vancouver, where the landfill goes, are banning organics. So they're going to be, I think it's a six month. Uh, July 1st is July right. yeah. 1st phase in. Um, we don't have a bylaw in the bylaws yet here, mm -hmm. which would need so there needs to be needs to be written in. But I, as of February 1st, we're going to every second week for landfill garbage. So if people don't start getting with the program and putting their food waste out weekly, they're going to have festering food sitting in there. But what are they going to do? Dig through our usual garbage, make sure there's no organics in there? Or how would they? That part I don't know. A detection device or something? You're going to ask me yeah. right. It sits in a giant bag. Yeah, you would know. Well, I would suspect that if you're not putting out a green can, the assumption is that you're putting all your, your waste into your garbage. So yeah. that's probably where it would start. Houses, homes would probably be flagged. Yeah. Because right. they're not putting out a green can. So I, I don't know what Metro's plan is to escalate any type of enforcement, but I would think that would be the first kind of hint for non compliance. I have a suspicion if, if I if my European experience is they, they dump the load in a in an inspection bin pad. They go through it quickly. And if there's anything they don't like, it goes this way and it's charged hundred dollars a ton. Or it goes this way and it's charged twenty dollars a ton. They're pretty draconian. But then they won't know whose load is. But they, it's line space load. It's it's rejected the whole load. Doesn't matter. Oh. Yeah. It's rejected the whole load. Yeah, it's yeah. so so we have one bad apple. Uh-huh. 
Bad apples go in the green waste, by the way. <laughs> if we have one bad apple, we're, we're in trouble. I've had a lot of comment, not a lot, I've had some comment from people about composting. They're begging us not to do in-town composting because of the rats. What's our position there? Do you mean a communal composting? No, no, your own home. Oh. Bear, bear safe, bear smart. Yeah, I hear this from a lot of people, but there are also many people who compost successfully and don't have rats at all. So I, my thinking on that is that it takes some trial and error. Rats like a warm shelter, a place to shelter. So if there are ways to deter rats from sheltering in your compost, so first of all, you have to, people should be sure they're not putting any cooked foods or you know, rotting foods in there. Uh, or rather, when they do put food in there, there should be a lot of browns. There needs to be twice as many brown items, leaves and, and uh, clippings in there. My, my concern is if we start encouraging composting, it's not my compost pile that's going to bring the rats into my house. It's my neighbor's compost pile that's inexpertly done. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the Bear Smart Committee is not encouraging, but we're not discouraging. We're just encouraging it to be done the right way. I think it's having the food scraps is so much better because yeah. I'm already getting a little lazy. Like, don't want to get my own compost. I'll put it in the food scraps. Mm. And so I think you know, people will... I, I just started today. I was telling me I got my can. Yeah. It's amazing how much food waste there is. Mm -hmm. My normal garbage is empty. Yeah, so this is also not that it's our place to do this, but there's lots of ways for people to now realize, gee, I can manage my food scraps and reduce my household costs. And, you know, so. Okay, so what do you need from us? I uh, just uh, wanted to hear if there were any uh, concerns about the program still, if you have any thoughts on how we can... Um, make tomorrow night more of a success. I, I honestly think that the only confusion is going to be what can you put in the food waste and what can you not. Okay. I came up to the village with a question and I asked the office, I said, I said, Susan, I said can I, what about my little plastic cake, uh, coffee cups, right. the little ones out of that machine over there, because they can't go in, they yeah, can't they go can. in, they're garbage. Yeah. And so, and yet on the websites they say coffee grounds and they show the coffee grounds, grounds and the stuff grounds like that. So, right. yeah, so, the, yeah, so that was the only question we had and that solved the problem. And I think communication is going to be the, the big yeah. part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So there's so much resource material. There's lots of ideas on how to uh, print out material. My experience is some people, a lot of people don't like to pick up, you know, they won't even take the brochure. So um, we're just going to have to, I think, by neighborhood. Uh, do it by example and talk to neighbors. And well, tomorrow's going to be a measure of how far the message is going. Yeah. When's the second seminar? Saturday, Saturday morning. Saturday. Yeah. Well, Friday, Friday would be the measure to see how many green cans are outside, right? Yeah. Well, do you know how many stickers have been picked? Shall we say 5%? Um, we have a running tally. I don't know. What I can tell you is that 22 people have ordered bins. So I placed the first order for bins. Yeah. That's a good sign. And I. Um, I was looking at a little list there, Susan's keeping the decals. There's probably about 45 uh, green can decals. That have gone out. We're almost at yeah. 10%. And on um, Wednesday and Saturday, I'm sure people There'll be a lot then, too. Mm -hmm. But those yeah. are the converted. Sorry. That, that's not the target audience. Those are converted people. Yeah. yeah. Those are ones who I've reached out <laughs> It's the people who don't want yeah. the sticker. It's going to be our issue. Yeah, well, I, you know. You know, as I, I said, all it takes is one resident to get our load rejected every time. Mm -hmm. One resident can mess us up. Well, maybe council should take an active role in that, and more than just being ambassadors, being a bad boys too. Just going to inspect the garbage. That's about every Friday. Yeah. Uh, you know what? It's not that big a deal. I made two walks in my street in the last three years to ask people to take the can in. Let's not do this. And you know, I'm, I don't mind picking your garbage up. It's part of the job. But you know, let's not. And that went over pretty big. That's fine. So I, you know, I. Can, Nothing. Because people open the door. The mayor's there. Yeah. Uh, the mayor will not be there. So <laughs> yeah, to go through your garbage. <laughs> the mayor will be absent. <laughs> the last little comment to make really is the very smart uh, principles and practices uh, need to be like just ingrained in our infrastructure. And people are saying, well, we don't have bureau problems. Yes, that's because we, hmm. you know, the committee's done a, a really, the village has done a really good job at educating. So we. Just keep, keep it going. <laughs> That's it. Thank, Thank you, Ruth. Thanks, Ruth. Thank you.
Okay, that's great. Um, any other public participation? Did you? You look like you have some slack, no? Okay. <laughs> that's very nice. That's the kind of public participation we like. Okay, so we will move on to uh, item four and the adoption of minutes from December 16. I did uh, email these earlier today. They're on table for you. I apologize they weren't ready when the package went on Wednesday. Um, do we want to just take a glance because I didn't see them on the email. I saw them. Everybody happy? Mm -hmm. No, I have a, um, okay. a point that I wanted to sure. ask. It back to when, um, Chief Oliver was talking and I asked him if um, he can get back to me with regards to conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. But that's not noted, I don't think. If he could get back uh, to you. Last sentence. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Oh. Oh, Last goodness. sentence of the penultimate paragraph. Ah. What was I reading? So, Council yeah, Tenant need to be good. sensitive to potential conflicts of interest for Councilor Watterson, whose husband's very blah, 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 blah. Yeah, so, yeah, what does that so. mean, sensitive? So, is it is it okay or is it not okay? It's going to depend on each individual. It'll depend on the topic at the moment as to whether you feel that you have an interest that would preclude you from participating. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really for you to declare. Um, and rem just to remind you, Robert, conflict of interest is pecuniary, money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I it's thought not, it wasn't just that. Uh, it's, no, no, it's mm -hmm. not just It's not just that. It's, what is it? Well, anywhere that you could potentially benefit. Yeah, but yeah, okay, budget, so you have it's to be pecuniary. monetary. Budget, house value, getting your fire put out. Well, yeah, as yeah. you know, contracted fire services watch your house burn if you haven't paid your fee. It happens all the time in California. And then a man with a gun comes visiting. Okay, so did you want, did, is that okay with you, Ron? So he's, the, so he's okay to remain in that position. Well, well, this is just the minutes we're talking about. Step oh, down okay. at, at this time. Okay. When specific things come forward to do with her, yes. you'll have yes, to decide if you should participate in those yeah. Yeah, conversations. Okay, so does that do, do yes. the minutes accurately re reflect what was said? Oh, I didn't read it, so I read a copy, which I didn't see it. So then, yes. Well, you got a different copy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with the doctored copy. Yeah. <laughs> if I maybe I should say. Copy. Okay. <laughs> do that with the rookies. Okay. Okay. Yes. Anything else? Okay, motion to approve. Um, second. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Um, do we need to nominate uh, who moves and who seconds, or is it just sufficient to say who that it's, it was? It's helpful if you say the names. So okay, so. I'm just for the recorder in case they're not looking up. Okay, but do you want us, because I noticed, for example, Metro just says moved second. You don't have to. Do you want to just say moved and second? We can, we can do that as long yeah. as everybody's in agreement. It's quicker. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that fine? Fine. Okay. We'll do it from now on. Okay. <coughs> Good. Thank you. Moving on. This is arising. Helen, you raised that. You're happy with that? Yes. Okay. Moving on. Uh, as I say, I didn't see them, so you, I'm going to have to rely on you. So you have them now. So yeah, I have them now. I mean, I'm glancing at them. They, they look right. Okay, no business arising. So we'll move on to unfinished business. Uh, Mayor Burr, I have four items, if that's fine. I'll be quick. One, uh, uh, very big picture finance committee. Uh, I've asked the CAO and Mayor Burr concurs that <coughs> in that there's uh, pending job interviews for the CFO position. The budget, if this was not an election year, would be very far along now. Uh, and we've just come off holidays, uh, but there is a desire to move the budget process along quickly to the point where some very, um, from very, some very 20,000 feet uh, decision-making uh, opportunities would become apparent. So um, the CAO has concurred that the week of the 19th that uh, she plus the her accounting personnel of her choosing We'll meet with Mayor Burr and I to preliminarily talk about the budget and potentially suggest some big picture plans, uh, which we would then ask are uh, done for, let's call it revision number two. And that would be brought back to council within a period that uh, we would suggest to the CAO. When's, uh, when's it 
target date for uh, a draft budget? Normally? No, this year. This year, I would guess. Uh, I would think that our personnel should be able to have it pretty refined within a month, and that's with the decision making pretty much down to the small grains. Really? That's yeah. Right. Well, there's X amount of dollars, and we're in a, a strategy year in some things, and doing um, the infrastructure cost would be another. Uh, the projects uh, that would be the jump ball would be, let's call it the large infrastructure projects, and that. We need to crystal ball on that one. Sorry. Oh, sorry. What's it doing? It's just started talking. So, in in brief, the template could be pulled off from what we've got, revised. That's pretty easy. So that'll be all done when uh, you and I meet with yeah, so them. That's mid -gen. <coughs> so that's mid Jan. So that's mid Jan. By the end of Jan, uh, draft number two should be well done. So that we, I'm going to guess that probably you and I would see them again, and then that should probably come back to council at a COTW for everybody's weigh in. Mid Feb. Uh, don't have my calendar in well, front of me. Whatever the whatever the session is, uh, let's say certainly before the second session, we probably hold a special. Yeah, I'm thinking the same. Yeah. Okay, good. So, so that'd be the more granular one, but uh, but. Staff knows what they have to do, so we're just giving them the direction early on, then it comes back. Okay, so the idea here is, of course, the quicker we can get it done, the, the, the quicker we have our marching orders and we know where we're heading. Um, it is correct, I think, unless people want to debate or discuss, that this is a planning year. Uh, we are going to try and deliver on certain things. I'm also adamant that we will deliver on budget this year. So last year we delivered about a quarter of the projects we budgeted for. Maybe that's a good thing from cash flow perspective, so we do actually have the cash available. So maybe that was a lucky error. Uh, it's not really an error. It was a, it, for whatever reason we didn't deliver on our budget. Uh, we didn't spend the money. With, well, know. good news is that the ducks, the deck's been reshuffled this year because of the events that have occurred in the last ninety days. So fine. Uh, Just I, as I, well we didn't do some of those. I, I concur, Mayor Burr, and I think that really the. You know, on the planning piece, but also there's some projects uh, that are obvious that should be done in the current current fiscal. So uh, the council can weigh in on that, plus pick uh, the projects that uh, they consider uh, important to them. So that's where I was going. So you need to think that through. I mean, the big yeah. one, obviously, is the infrastructure piece, the, 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 the master plan. And we think that number is going to be around 100,000. I'd, I'd put a hundred. There'll be others. Um, I know that we've talked about some of the stuff in the uh, preliminary infrastructure recommendations, like the beach park. There's going to be stuff we need to think through. But Ron and I will take. Uh, we know that just as well as anybody, so we don't all need to weigh in. We'll just take a cut at that, right, Ron? Yeah. And then see what it looks like. Um, have we had the um, 2004-2015 aggregate assessment back from BCA yet? No, but we should be close. It's been sent, it just hasn't arrived yet, so okay. it should be. Do you have, so we don't, so so we talked earlier on that you said so it, you might get it in paper, not in electronic? We get it both. The electronic one um, just needs to get access. Oh, okay. It's, been it's just a login, right? Yet. It's a login yeah. to their so yeah, yeah, portion of an hour away. Okay. Yeah. Well, my sense is from talking to people in my own assessment, which, which is available online, uh, is that the assessments will go up. Therefore, if we keep the same mill rate, we will see a, a, a raise in tax revenue. Um, we still have to talk, we talk about uh, parcel taxes and utility rates, mm -hmm. that's a separate issue. But the, but the mill rate revenue will like to go if we elect to keep it in the and, and not to take anything for granted, I'd be happy to recirculate this week uh, how the village comes to a tax notice and on what a mill rate means and all the rest of that in very simple language. I don't mean to insult anybody with that, but. It's amazing uh, the large number of folks that don't know why their taxes or what the number is. Well, this might be an appropriate time to ask, just to get a, a, sort of a straw poll uh, understanding. We have tried to maintain a tax increase to, we did a 10% last year, right? Services for, for yeah. general. It wasn't 10%. 10% utilities. <coughs> general tax rate. Okay, so 4% was the number that I'd always had yeah. in mind. Four. So we didn't, we, we had, I had heard it banded about 10%, but we didn't do that. No, and this is a dollar ten percent, not not a rate. The services, the utilities were a big number. Okay, so what's the sense we want to do this year? Just so that Ron and I know. 
uh, the five-year plan is based on the continuation of the four, just as an information piece. I'd suggest that maybe a pipe drain, given our road issue up there, uh, the need to clean out intakes, the need to fix a lot of stuff that's broken that gets my goat that I'm on the back right now. You know, there may come a point where we have to consider it, but I'm not seeing any great undertaking to, to raise rates. So even if we, you know, it's the dollar volume that's important to people. Uh, the rates, or rates that we have right now are going to, likely going to increase once we get our hands into the infrastructure and know what we're, our costs are going to be. For now, we don't know. We don't have any idea. For us to make a comment on that right now wouldn't be... Yeah. The problem is the decision needs to be made quite soon because it's yeah. that skills. Well, yeah. then we keep it as four. Yeah. yeah. To pick a number. Yeah, that's right. Well, you know what your planning is going to be then. Talk bigger next year. Well, when we're meeting with staff, I mean, they can do two scenarios. Do that plus. Well, actually, it's a pretty easy deal. Yeah, I mean, it's not, it, you know, this is just a sighting shot. It's more a case of understanding what we want to do. Uh, do we want to start funding AMOT? of certain items. And as you know, my belief is that future residents must pay for future benefits through their property taxes, not through an amortization fund paid for by current residents. In other words, I don't want to pay for somebody else's roads in 20 years' time. On the other hand, residents have had free use of the roads for a very long time, so maybe we should be putting a little bit of savings that we should have been paying, uh, paying off on property taxes, which we weren't. So there's a balance. Uh, there is a balance, and, it, and it, this is a complicated question without an easy answer. No. The, um, certainly when I quizzed uh, former Mayor Broughton why the previously the tax increase was kind of two and small percent, didn't really get an answer that met with much else uh, in terms of the financial aspect. Certainly under the past budget, the four percent was to, and the intention was to beef potential infrastructure spending. So I don't believe any <coughs> cash that would have been generated, which would have been about forty, forty-five thousand dollars because of the four percent was ever segregated. So that's notionally something that we may want to do versus just leaving it in free cash flow. Um, and also I guess the, to your piece, uh, amortization uh, and this would be one of the questions that I would have of staff, what is our breakdown of amortization because roads we all use. Um, if <coughs> I couldn't tell you what the amortization of the concrete basin for the sewer treatment plant is, but if that's a monstrous number and you divide it amongst the approximately whoever number of homes in Kelvin Grove, that could be a pretty big tax bill. So I think uh, that's where you probably get some staff input on the amortization piece. Everybody brings their calculator and a couple of blank sheets of paper and say, let's think about what we're really trying to do here. Okay, well, we'll look at that within the finance committee. Yeah. Yeah. But to your piece, what is the potential number? I think without, without a clear goal other than short-term <coughs> strategy in mind, the 4% sounds right to me. The problem is to be accurate, you need a whole bunch of information that we don't have. And we know that there's certain events that are going to come at us. We know for a fact that we're going to be spending money in infrastructure. We know for a fact we have to start stocking away money every year towards infrastructure. Well, you know, that type of thing. Yeah, so, but it is but somewhat we of a know, situation. We're talking in well, circles. Right. I'm just, my concern is that the 4% was only sold last year. So to suddenly say, oh, maybe we need. If we can wait, as you say, until we get, you know, a better picture. It's we shouldn't but, say anything. Uh, uh, Councilor Watterson, it's put forward in the five-year budget, though, so it's four every year for the next several years. It's well published to the to the public. But it was presented last year and sold, like... I think it's been 4% for a long time. Oh, so what was that big... That's sort of a notional inflation number. Mm -hmm. Well, well inflation hasn't been 4% for 20 years. It's 2.2% <clears throat> for, talk on near a decade pr prior to last year, and then moved to 4 and his, it, and the five-year budget based on then budget was based on the four. Okay, well, let's see how it goes. I mean, my instinct is that we need to raise, raise funds. If that's done through taxes, okay, well, then that's where it comes from. Otherwise, where else does it come from right well, now? Um, okay. 
I, not you, this isn't politicking here. The, my view, though, is that um, if we're going to raise taxes, the residents need to see the benefit and the services that are attached to that, or the cash is taken and pooled into an infrastructure kitty or something like that. Well, it needs to be in the budget. So yeah. the first thing need the budget to show so, what we'd want to spend the money yeah. on if, if we do indeed go that way. There are other revenue opportunities, I hardly need to point out. The village owns land. Uh, there's uh, fees that we're not charging right now, like a d development levy. There's lots of things we haven't looked at yet. Uh, business licenses, um, getting a share of um, charging proportionally homes that are claimed for business premises in federal and provincial tax returns. They should be paying business mill rate on the business portion. Now, we don't know if we can get that data, uh, that CRA data. Um, I have a call into the auditor to find out. I, I don't know. Other municipalities that. presumably face the same issue. So if you're claiming 400 square feet of your home, uh, you need to pay that as, as a, a business mill rate, which is double. So th there's all kinds of opportunities beyond just a sort of a wholesale tax increase. It's, um, that was one. To Next. move on. Yes. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> library, uh, the books have been moved. I'll be very quick on this. The books have been moved. They've got three quotes for the uh, <coughs> painting, so I expect that's gone to the CAO. Uh, the executive are still hoping of doing their uh, coffee and muffins by the end of the month. Of January. Uh, of January. <laughs> <laughs> How feasible is that, CAO? I don't know what the S schedule of their... Painter of choices, but that's the budget we allocated thirty five hundred, yep. right? Yep. This is just an advice piece. Okay. Uh, historical Society, and this is just a heads up thing. Uh, they held their AGM today, and uh, confirmed their current officers. One of the projects that they are looking at, which in concept and in community spirit seems like a good one, is and I'm not stealing their term or whether this will be the final one it's something uh, the project would be something called the garden of remembrance and this is a concept idea where it's a memorial within the village bowen island has got a memorial society and these are uh, obviously former residents and some have had uh, bequests and i can think of um, uh, a couple myself where we've uh, dedicated benches and stuff like that uh, they were originally thinking that this, and so it's not like we're going to have tombstones on the lawn here. This is about smaller plaques and an uh, uh, area of solitude and memorial. Uh, they were considering the water tower here, which I'm not sure which the number is, but it's one with the Christmas tree lights on, on the main entrance. Uh, that was deemed not uh, suitable for the purposes. Uh, where they believe the location should be now is the Wade Park and so uh, a potpourri of things that they are looking at firstly they're approaching the, the Wade family to make sure there's no problems there they will likely go to the neighborhood to make sure there's no problems there uh, this is all very fuzzy so far I have encouraged them uh, on behalf of all of us to go forward with council support in the term of it's, this is a neighborhood piece, it's community concentric, uh, but they need to come up with their plan and uh, proposal. Uh, I did see the stuff that's being done at Bowen Island that looks very tasteful, very subdued, so all good. Ruth Simons is chairing this piece, so I'd expect that she'd be doing this. So I've chatted with the CAO about this, all is fine up until this point. So this is just the information there. Yeah. Um now this will fall into Helen's portfolio at some yes. point, right? So uh, you, can you do that handover when the time starts? Yeah, it's, uh, they meet infrequently, but that's why I, while we're still in limbo here. So, so who is the executive of the historical society? Uh, Tony Cox is the chairman, so he would be always. happy to do that. Uh, and then the last one, which is the tree committee. Uh, this is the non-decision-making piece of our day. Uh, this evening, I uh, will be proposing Simon Watterson uh, as the inbound chair. I've given him a uh, three and a half weeks to reconsider his early offer. He uh, has continued to accept it. Um, 
The I have also uh, come up with another uh, resident who would like to become a, a, a member of the committee and has three experience. Uh, the past chair will meet with the proposed chair and they can do the dialogue and there's records there as well too. Um, keeping the CA out, uh, CAO to the side for the moment. Uh, the issue here is that, uh, and I don't know that there are any requests out <coughs> right now, but this, this particular committee needs to be functional fairly quickly. So I think that uh, presuming Council's approval tonight with the proposal, then I would be suggesting that the inbound chair meet with the CAO to uh, to discuss the process for the committee, to, and this is an operations discussion, not a council discussion. And I would think here that depending on what the composite here is, that while this at the current time falls within Councillor Waterson's uh, super committee, does it? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, no, we moved it. Did we move it? We moved it to government. Oh, okay. Move, okay, even better. Uh, well, it doesn't matter. It's actually what uh, it's, I was thinking. You're going to say that, yeah. In terms of conflict, yeah. but um, so I'm actually thinking that all of us, with the exception of Mayor Burr, should be alternates, and that's because uh, when they sometimes when they meet, not everybody can go, or it's a bad time, and uh, sometimes there's a desire for more council members than not. So I think where I see this going here is that there is now uh, a goodly number of residents. There's a potential for a mediator, mediator in a sticky situation. And we've also got alignment with what I expect will be new terms of reference. But again, that's an operations piece and we don't have to set that guidance. So that's Very my good. two bits on that. So the only thing that will come back tonight is my putting forward um, resident Watterson as chairman and uh, what I've just given you, uh, I'll give to him verbally when I see him next. Any okay, questions? Um, the fact that we want to potentially change the tree committee to the trees, views, and landscapes committee takes place subsequent to the striking of the committee. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's cosmetic, I think. It's a different bylaw, it's a di but that's it's a, lot of, a lot of pre work before that happens. Yeah. 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 Okay, good. Uh, that was the third thing. You had one more. Uh, finance is library two historical society trees number oh, four. Okay, that was for good. Um, we can talk about the infrastructure committee now, or we can just do it in the council meeting. Are we just striking? Well, if I could just pose a question to to help me with clarity on it, if we could have some sort of timeline and a start date of when we hope to get this thing rolling. Um, I know we had talked about uh, this week. Well, that's obviously not going to work. But if I can have sort of a start date I can anticipate, that would be very helpful, pulling stuff together, making more contact uh, for that one. And also with the Emergency Planning Committee, we've got updates to do on it, so I realize it gets bumped often. So if there's some sort of information you give me when we can get going on that again, that would be helpful. When, when did the infrastructure, it met on a Wednesday, right? Yeah. Was it the second or third Wednesday? I thought it was week? the third Wednesday. Third Wednesday of every month. That's what I thought. Thursday would work better for me. Well, I'm fine by me. Not, yeah, not an issue with me. Yeah, in fact, Wednesdays don't work for me anymore. Yeah. Okay, so so that would answer. Although, if it's all the same for you, because this one needs the quicker we can get this one going, the quicker Nikki can get moving on on putting together the the RFP for the master plan. Absolutely. So I maybe we can go to every uh, the second Wednesday, the uh, second Thursday of every month. Up to you. It works up to you because you're, you're the chair, right? No, I'm fine. Okay, it works. It's very important for us to get going that quickly. Yeah. Oh, I agree. Absolutely. Do you want to talk about members, or do we do that? In the I think we can do it. If we're, we already have touched on who they're going to be, has yeah. there been any change from the Well, last so I session? talked to Brian Ulrich. He would very much like to still be on the committee. I know you support that. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm fine with it. I said, you know, this is not just attending meetings. He, he was very helpful at meetings. He didn't have a lot of extra time, so you're going to have to hold his feet to the fire. But when he spoke, he really spoke well, and that's what we need. He's mainly a water purity um, guy, but he's also a mechanical engineer, so he understands systems, municipal stuff. Mm -hmm. he, he, he was great. It's just he didn't have a lot of time. Yeah. So Sitting from the gallery, I was impressed by his, um, yeah. his contribution. Yeah. 
I think just on the on the membership, um, making calls and not getting them back for for uh, finance stuff. But I'm thinking that if certainly for finance, where we're thinking of going two council members and two community members, I don't actually mind having more community members and alternate the attendance because sometimes people are out of town or whoever. So rather than having a set two all the time, it, let's say for the sake of argument, we had four that were. Uh, committee members, but only two were invited to the meeting, or two could attend the meeting. Yeah, that makes a difficulty with continuity, that you know, everybody's going to have to keep briefing each other. Mm -hmm. Would that work? I mean, you have to formally strike the committee and its members. Yeah, and there's a balance there, because on a, as you know, on a, on a select committee, you have to have equal numbers. No, the other way around, have, standing committee. Sorry, a standing committee and a, and a select, you can, <coughs> that can all be different. The question would probably be to... Um, the ministry to find out if you can have an alternate member and if that supersedes the, the numbers. Where can I leave that to be I can, explored? I can look okay, that. so that so my thinking specific to this, and that may occur in other committees, is that so okay, we've got the two council members, that's fine. We post the date. Uh, the uh, the thing comes uh, an event occurs where one of the residents could not attend. Well, we have an we the greater we have an agenda here. And we're trying to stick to the hard date. So it's much easier to pick up a phone and say, hello, you, Mr. or Mrs. alternate member, we'd like you to attend tonight. Well, maybe the alternates can always attend. I'm pretty sure that you would have to strike the committee, name the members, and it has to be an equal number of, of council members and, and not. Um, well, they you know, can, they can attend a vote or a quorum okay. expectation here. Technical question then. I mean, not to diminish any sitting at a table or sitting in the front row, because certainly for the finance committee, they could care less. Uh, if it's going, uh, if there are two council members at the table, and for this is for continuity purposes, I can see where they would be interested in coming, and they would understand the logistics that we're facing here. Uh, could you do two plus two at the table and one in the front row, uh, not participating? Or participating. Well, then they're, but then they're or not participating. participating. If they're participating, no. Then so, yes, they sit and they... Well, I certainly know on the infrastructure committee, the audience participated, and they were useful, had <coughs> contributions to make. Well, okay, so then this is a fine hair splitting for you yeah. to Yeah, it's a little again. bit of a hair splitting. So I'm going to leave this with you, if that's fine. To find out about alternates. Yeah, so that's the deal, because I, I certainly, if we've got willing and qualified residents, then more is better than less, mm -hmm. because I see the less creating a hardship when we need, let's pick the finance and the budget date where we want to move it quickly. Sorry, I'm in Mexico tomorrow. I can't go. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, I mean, the meetings are monthly and they're a known day. And, you know, if you're committing to be on a committee, you just commit to okay. come to meetings. Let's, I'm only trying to build some leeway here. I know what you're going to say now. Our lawyer is here yeah. waiting okay. for the in-camera piece, so yeah. Let's um, move on. just being cognizant of his time. I can uh, <clears throat> speak on uh, new business parcel tax. Uh, Sorry, so we're going to take a recommendation forward to appoint the Infrastructure Committee tonight? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Uh, if I can steal your role, Mayor Burr, here, uh, just in terms of the brevity here. Lions Bay Parcel Tax. Uh, Ms. Cook has written a very detailed piece here. It's just hit the table. Uh, I can uh, say that this is a complex and tricky question, and it requires further investment by uh, staff to come forward with this. I would suggest that uh, this is a kind of a knowledge piece for the balance of the council members, and that when uh, Mayor Burr and I meet with staff in the next two weeks, we'll investigate it further, and ultimately it will come back to the council as a whole. Uh, and I'm not trying to short circuit this, but literally if we went A to Z, it would be two hours in the explanation yeah. period. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's I think that's fair. Okay, um, and and kudos to, to Mr. Suvarna and Haley Cook for a concise and brief presentation. Well, I think you were the one that flagged it. Well okay. Um, yeah. Good. Okay. Thanks, Ron. So that takes care of the parcel tax item. Highway review. Who's highway review? Um, I went through our our notes from the uh, HAG and the CAG and all the n other little names that we had um, while we were doing that. And in the end of 2004, we had completed most of our uh, design criteria, flushed it all out, got it all back, and got commitments back from the ministry of what was going to happen. We spent the next three or four years 
watching it all happen and making sure it happened as according the way it was supposed to. So all of the decisions were made for the highway by 2005. And we have a report from the provincial government that outlines what was decided, why it was decided, and how it was all. We do have that report. I do have, we do have that report, yes. And the interesting part of it is that we have very little, we had very little control over the design features on the highway. What we did have control over was some of the community features, but they were not going to downplay safety for the niceties, okay? So when it comes to no, no post or no ba Jersey barriers in certain places, that was nothing to do with the committee. That was a highway's decision for whatever reason. In most cases, it was design based. So that's where that's where we stand back from it and say, you know, my suggestion is if we have a problem with the highway in the village, we, we our HAG is still in place. It has not been disbanded because they meet once a year. So we could just easily step up, have the HAG write the RCMP and ICBC and Ministry of Highways and say, what's going on? Why are we having accidents in our village? Why is the design not working? Or maybe the design is working, and yeah. if we took the design away, it would get even worse. That's right, exactly. So that's that's our that's our line that we have to put in the sand. That's how we deal with it, I think. That's the only thing we can do. I mean, yes. There's nothing else other than yeah, we have no, uh, no influence here. Standing down there. I, well, we may have influence, but yeah. So th there's a move afoot in the press and with this guy in West Van, who I presume was in the accident and couldn't go skiing. I, yeah. I couldn't make out what his interest was otherwise. Um, that they want to get median barriers put all the way through Lions Bay. I have that 100-page report with all the documents attached to it, plus I have a lot of the emails and a lot of the stuff from the, the Highway Committee in the early years, and I poured over that stuff for two days on the weekend. I went through everything, and I read it all, and I concluded the only thing of value was that report that says it's been done, the design has been reached, now we're going to go and start building. and. That's what happened. Is that a public report? Do you uh, know, did it go public or was it just... No, public? I think it was just to the committee in the village. It would be public if it was at the Hag meeting, though. Yeah. The meeting. yeah, it probably is public. It's probably available on the website. Yeah. For the I actually page. had a list of that. Put it on the website. Yeah. I have a copy of the report. I can give it to everybody. It's not a problem. Spreadsheet plus that one. I probably got it on my iPad. So. Okay, well, good. So, I mean, the, the issue is that I fully expect that we will get approached by the province uh, to talk about it. Um, whatever happens, if we lose... <coughs> what we want, and I don't know what we want, um, so we'll have to talk about that in the HAG, in the Highway Advice Group. If we lose anything, according to our measures, we'll get concessions on something else, mm -hmm. up to and including um, a waiver on the speed camera ruling, or perhaps including your speed is flashing signs, or who knows what. We've already got attention. We had, I come to the village this afternoon at, at, at lunchtime, and guess what, there's a radar gun standing there watching all the cars come into the village. So I just nodded and waved, you know, and pulled into the village. It's not great. At least we're getting some attention. So that's all we can do. That's the that's the issue. It's, as far as I'm concerned, it's speed. That's just me. I, do, I didn't get the report on the accident, what happened. I haven't seen it. I just know there was... Well, those reports apparently take six months. So. Yeah. Well, um, okay. You know, it's, like, it's like putting cats where the mice are. You know, once somebody's okay. eating your brothers, you mean you tend not to go there. So uh, I think that's great. Maybe, I mean, the... I think the police do come and uh, speak with us every, at least every quarter. Mm -hmm. Certainly this should be a big part of our discussion when they're here, because they seem to be very accountable for their actions. So, During my time in, in the Infrastructure Committee, the most, one of the most active outside participants was ICBC. Mm -hmm. They were very concerned. In the highway? On the highway, yeah. Mm -hmm. They were very concerned what was going on. Yeah, we will, I know Brenda constituted a, a, a group about a year and a half ago? Just over a year ago. Yeah. I see everybody was there, including ICPC. So let's uh, let's table, is table the correct term? Let's shelve this? Let it this? sit. What's the furniture? Let it sit. Okay, do you want to do anything with it, or are we just leaving it? Definitely. Uh, but the first action will be by the province. Right now, we're not. So we're just discussing. We're just discussing. So if someone asks us what we're doing, We'll, we'll, say we're just well the, the answer is we are aware we're going to work with the province if they start if they address it with us but it's, that's a provincial highway there's nothing we can do we'll we do the rest the of it we're on the highway so we can't send a delegation out and say oh maybe you sh we should review it 
Well, the point right is... Right to whoever we like. We can make all the points we want to make. We already have a highway committee in place. We have not disbanded the Hague. That's, that's, that's the way. They still need to do with landscaping or watering issues on the highway and anything that's, that's <coughs> infecting the village going through or something that's wrong. Well, Ned, maybe we need to get that back together and come up with the village's position so that we understand what it is. That's, that's, that's prim probably... Is there primary contact still on the other side, not in the Hague, but on the provincial side? That the provincial here? side? I think it's still... I'm not sure. I don't think Peter Milburn is still there, but I think it's his, whoever is, the, who is in his position. You want to say something? For yeah. Yeah. Um, Last year, I think it was, Brenda and I met with the uh, highways representatives coming through here, and this was just after the uh, aftermath of a uh, motorcycle accident north of Alberta Creek, where the guy was doing, I think it was estimated somewhere between 120 and 130 K when he hit the wall, obviously excessive speed. The, uh, the member from the government, whose name escapes me at the moment, doesn't matter because he's now retired, his point of view was the problem is sight lines, and so you'll notice north of Lions Bay, or the north end of Lions Bay, the, the shrubs are, are cut down. We do have a problem coming in as, in as much as there were some members on highways that are adamant that the problem is not what it really is. The fire chief and I talked about this many times and his experience is the people miss the turns because they're just plain going too fast. It has nothing to do with sight lines. But we, we, we do have a problem in that we're going to have to convince the government that uh, they need to have another look at this, that uh, there are issues on the highway. But as you say, it is not technically our problem. But if they want to come for our advice, we have to stay on, on message, I think. Well, yeah, we don't want to lose sight of the, I mean, the, the issue is if somebody loses it on a bend because they're going too fast and crosses the median and hits somebody else, that's a design issue. There should be a barrier there. Mm -hmm. the, the point is people don't drive the speed limit. Okay, so that's a fact. If they were driving 60, I don't think we'd be having this discussion. So. What has it got to do with Lions Bay? I don't know. I think we need to probably reconstitute the Hague and, and go from there. It was extremely obvious, reading the report, that one of the major concerns raised by the village was our stretch of highway turning into a passing zone. That was raised, I can't tell you how many times at public meetings, and it was time and time again in the documentation. And they did not want to. Re they didn't would not want the highway to come down two lanes in Lions Bay because they, most of the residents honestly felt that would that would slow people down and cr stop the passing area. But in the accidents that we have seen, the accident we've seen lately, I don't think that was the issue. I think the issue really was something different, speed. So you don't. Well, I just and according to Simon, uh, it was icy. Yeah. Well, he had like he went on four calls on Saturday, no well, three. What would we like to do with this? Um, what we will do with this is, I, I think we need to understand what our position is. Yeah. I think we'll look to the Hag to establish that position yeah. based on its expert discussion. Okay. Come back with a recommendation to Council on, on, on our next step, if any. On the other hand, I believe that we will probably hear from the province still. I actually took a bet with somebody. It was going to be this week yet. I think if we know anything about the province, we know that everything happens at a snail's pace. Well, maybe it's you know, I don't. Slower, I don't think. I think it's always good to be proactive. It certainly can't hurt. I don't necessarily want to volunteer any extra construction. As far as I know, the design is best practice. Um, it's possible that the speed enforcement is is lacking. Let's come up with some recommendations. The the entire design concept came from the ministry. Okay, context sensitive stuff was all their idea and they had all sorts of agree arguments and they showed us all sorts of examples of where it worked. Same with the quiet pavement. All sorts of examples where it worked and we went and looked. And what they were right. It did seem to work, it did seem to fit, and so we went. But as we know, things change mm -hmm. all the time. And so that's what's happened. Something's changed in people's habits. But we can look at and we can we can think and talk to the hag. And see, it, you know, we, we, we can certainly do that without causing a problem. We can meet with the members that are still in existence and see what we can do. Okay, well, but so you've got, you've got an action item there, Hayden. Um, so, Jim, let's you put a brief together or a scope document or something. I can do. Um, run it by the rest of us just to check that everybody's got in there what they think we need to do. Run it through the hag, come up with a recommendation, come back to council. Flexible okay. time on that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially if the province is going to move slow. We're not going to do anything preemptive. No. Okay, good. Everybody happy on that? Yeah. Um, let's move on. Item number eight on the agenda, public questions and comments. Public? <laughs> <laughs> good. 
then I would like to uh, have council resolve that the Village Lions Bay does close the January 6, 2015 committee of the whole council meeting to the public on the basis of matters to be considered under the following sections of the community charter. 91, a part of a council meeting made close to the public if the subject matter being considered relates to or is one or more of the following. Section C, labor relations or other employee relations. Section G, litigation or potential litigation affecting the municipality. May I have a motion to approve? Jim Hughes. Oh, we're not going to do names anymore. Uh, second. Um, all in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Goodbye, Deirdre. <laughs> it was nice having you while we had you. <laughs> Haley's going to go anyway. Okay. We'll be flushing up the committee stuff at the end. In the Okay, so uh, we're resuming the uh, open meeting of the committee of the whole council. Agenda item 9, reporting out of in-camera session. There's nothing to report. Moving on to 10. Do we have to move and second that? Uh, no, 9. Number 9? No. No, just mention it. Number 10. Okay. Uh, can I have a motion for adjournment? Second. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Meeting adjourned. Thank you.